In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create uh, slideshows just like this. Um, let's say we have three images that are just kind of um, uh, transitioning from one to the other. We also have a headline that shows up below the image uh, based on whatever is displayed. Now you can change the timing of all of this. Um, and I'm going to go into all of this setup um, using the Slick Slideshow plugin. Now there is another way to achieve this type of feature. You can do it with repeating groups, um, but I uh, go through that in much more depth with my VIP members. Um, so please remember to check out uh, information about VIP membership if you are not already a member. There's a link in the description below. So let's get started with this tutorial. Um, again, this is using a plugin called Slick Slideshow. This is a bubble published plugin, it's free. Um, once you install it to your application, if you go over to the design tab, you can see here that you have a new visual element that has become available for you called slideshow. So I'm going to select that and add it to my page like this. Once you add it, you can immediately see just kind of the default layout of um, the slideshow. So you can see you have the image, it's kind of the main event there. Then you have your navigation arrows on the right and left side so that the user can flip through. And then you also have navigation dots on the bottom so that the user can see how many images are in the list. There will be as many dots as there are um, in the slideshow, uh, uh, how, however many images are in the slideshow. This plugin has two different modes. So you can either uh, display a list of images that have been uploaded directly to the property editor here. So you have a static list or it can be a dynamic list where the images are pulled from your database. Uh, that way it's kind of um, an unknown. It could be something that's powered by your users. So maybe, uh, for example, if you're creating like an Airbnb type of application and users are creating listings, right? And the slideshow is to display all of the images that they have uploaded for a particular listing. You have no idea how many images those are going to be. Um, even if you maybe set a max, you know, of 10 images, the user could maybe upload only three or five or all 10. So that in that type of scenario, you would use a dynamic uh, list of images. So I'm going to show you kind of the setup for both modes. By default, you've got the static list. So type of list is upload each image. Um, you can see here, we can switch over to the other mode. Um, you'll just need to click upload another image and you're immediately taken to upload um, an image of your own. This can also take a dynamic image, but just keep in mind that whatever you set up here, it's always going to pull this for that first image. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, select just a free placeholder here. So I'll select this nice landscape one. So it'll fill it in there. Uh, and then I'm going to do two more here. So I'll click upload another image. And you can see you just repeat with the same settings. So I'm going to find another picture here. And we'll do one more. Okay, and we'll do this one. Okay, so I have my three static images. Uh, and you can now see that there are three dots. Now something to keep in mind is that you cannot reorder the images once you've uploaded them in this format here. If you need them in a specific order, just make sure to upload them in that order. There's no uh, switching around of the positions. Um, at the bottom here, you have a run mode rendering setting. So this just either it will stretch the image so that it can fill the dimensions that you've created here, or it will re you can choose rescale so that the image's proportions um, stay even and balanced according to the original design of the image, um, regardless of what your dimensions are for the overall slideshow. So if that means the width of the image is going to come down and you're going to have some extra white space, it'll do that, whatever it needs to do to keep the proportions. So just keep that in mind, stretch might warp your image a little bit. Then near the bottom here, you have some animation settings that are available to you. So you have a couple of defaults and I really just recommend previewing uh, the defaults to see how you want to adjust from there. You can modify the speed of the, of the, of the slideshow. Um, you can see that it automatically started uh, moving through my images. I didn't have to click anything. So that is the autoplay feature here. You can turn that off. So if I change the speed to, let's say, three seconds, this is in milliseconds, um, then it will slow down a little bit more. Let's refresh to just see that. So it should hold a little bit longer on each image now. 
Yeah, there we go. And you can see that I can still click the arrows to move through manually if I click a lot faster. Um, left and right go in those order and you can see the navigation dots are updating for you. Um, you can also change the colors of the dots here if I choose red instead. Same thing for the arrows, I can make those red as well. Uh, you can also hide the, not, the, the dots if you want and also hide the arrows so that it really is just a flat image slideshow and there's no way for the user to interact with it. So that's completely optional, up to you, whatever you want the behavior to be. Um, and then you have the, so the difference between the animation speed and the speed here is this is how long the image will hold um, in view. This speed up here is how long it will take to transition between the images. So if I do a three second transition speed over here, it's called animation speed. We'll take a look and see uh, what that does. See how much slower it moves between the slides. So just play around with that to get the right combination of whatever uh, you'd like for the behavior here. And then you also have the animation style, which is uh, two options here, slide, which we've been seeing, or fade, uh, which will just fade in and out uh, as the transition between the two images. So let's take a look. It's just kind of going to fade in the background, and then the other one will come back up. There we go. So it's a nice little cross dissolve type of effect there. So this is one method. Um, if you want to move over to the dynamic list mode, then you have a few other options uh, for setting this up. First, you'll need to tell Bubble where this list is coming from. So you will need uh, a data type of your own with an image field in it, and I'll show you that in a moment, or you can have the type of image set to image. So for example, let me do, I'm gonna do under the user type, I'm gonna create a field for profile picture. Okay, and this image, this uh, field type will be type image, and I'll create that. And so now I have a data type user with an image field. So look at the difference between these two data sources. I could either do a search for users profile picture. So this source is now a list of images and it's compatible with our type because this is set to um, an image type. It's just looking for a list of images. Or you could set this to one of your data types, whether it's the user or one of your custom types that you create in your database. Now you'll need to set the data source to a list of that type. So here I would remove the field and just leave it at search for users. And by doing that, Bubble's going to say, OK, we see your type. You've got the list of, uh, of that type. Now where is the image field for us to pull from and display here? So now you have to indicate, all right, the profile picture is the field that I want to use. The reason you would want to set it up this way is because you can actually reference the current slides thing. In this case, it would be the current slides user. So if I wanted to show extra information about the user that I'm currently looking at, their profile picture that I'm looking at, I can do that. For example, I can take this text element, uh, put it underneath here. I'm just going to center this. And I can use dynamic data to display the slideshow's current slides email address, for example, or their name or whatever other field you have in the database. This makes it a much more dynamic um, setup. And uh, you, know, you, can, you can really create a more customized display of the slideshow and potentially any other information about that slide. Uh, so this is one of the biggest benefits to having a dynamic data source. Your data source doesn't necessarily need to be pulled from records that your users um, are generating. You could also create a data type for yourself to be able to manage Im images um, just on your own, just for your own internal purposes. So for example, if this slideshow was on your landing page and it was just to show some images of marketing material, but you still wanted it to be dynamic because maybe you have some uh, particular copies, some, some text that you want to show with specific images. You could do something like this. You could create a data type called um, landing page image with a field for the photo, of course, which would be an image type, as well as the, um, let's say, 
headline for that image, which would be a text. Right. So now you can do something like this. We'll change this type of image to landing page image. This would be a search for landing page images. The image field would be the headline or sorry, the photo. And then the text you display below it is the slideshow's current slides headline. And as the image changes, so will the headline because this is only pulling from the current slides record. So you would create these records for the landing page images manually uh, by clicking new entry here, we're in app data, and then just entering in the headline, uploading the photo yourself. Uh, and these, while they're still considered to be uh, dynamic, um, images because they're pulling from your database. You can see them also as static because it's you who are, who who is manually updating um, this information here. You're the one that's creating the entries, not your users. But it does give you a bit more control um, and, and customization over the look and feel of this whole thing. Now, if you're interested in creating a fully, fully customized slideshow using repeating groups, you can absolutely do that. And I have a full tutorial that goes through that entire setup for my VIP members. If you're interested in checking that out and also ha having access to tons of other in-depth tutorials, please check out my VAP membership. It's in the link below, in the description below. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and thanks so much for watching.